Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's another day that was not promised, another day that the Lord has kept us. This is Church in the Word with yours truly, Brian Cochran. Uh, we are Gospel Worldwide. You can go to gww1.com for uh, more resources that we offer there. Um, it's a, so glad to be back with you. Had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we honor you. And thank you for another day that was not promised. We thank you for another year. We thank you for who you are and what you've done in our lives. We thank you that we, while we're yet sinners, Father, you sent Jesus to pay a price that we could not pay. We thank you for Jesus. You saved us. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you for the abundant life. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God. You are our strength and our redeemer. May we have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I am so glad. I'm so glad we just, uh, my wife and I, we do a little, we get blessed and she purchased uh, a little getaway uh, for, for, for my birthday for us to go to Vegas to relax and be restored. And we're back and uh, now it's time to go to work. And uh, I thank God for it. And uh, where are we? We are here today. Uh, our broadcast is brought to you by Viz, I mean by a VAC uh, radio and TV network. We finally got our software. I was going to actually try it out today, um, but the Lord put on my heart to do live. I was going to, you know, uh, we got some pretty cool stuff. Had to get a new computer, had to get some new software. So next year, starting in 2019, we'll be broadcasting a whole lot more. So I'm excited about that. So uh, right down BAC TV network, and we'll be broadcast. We'll be advertising and let you know more about that. Uh, we are also uh, today. Our lesson is going to be on year end checkup. Year end checkup, and I've already prayed. And it's funny because I, I, you know, we all do. Well, I can't say we all. Most of us will do New Year's resolutions, and we'll reflect on last year, and we'll look at, you know, we don't think about it, you know, some of us think about it and say, oh, wow, I, I missed the mark last year, I, I didn't get it right last year, um, but how many of you know that uh, he, our, his mercies are renewed every morning, and so we have a fresh start, so one of the things I want to share before we even get into our lesson today that, you know, I, I fell short last year, and one of the biggest areas that I fell short was spending more time with the Lord, which is part of what I'm going to be talking about today, and that we're going to be doing our fresh start fast uh again so we did do it last year uh we will be doing it again this year we have been doing it for years in the past and and for some reason i kind of i have to repent so i did but but we're going to be sending out information about fasting with us a, it's a daniel fast and so we'll be uh, seeking god for the new year and uh, by denying our plates and there's other things that we're going to get into i'm going to probably teach next week on fasting and what fasting is and then uh we'll get into our fast it's a 21 day fast and uh, we give up meats, you know, we only eat vegetables and whole grains and all, you know, we'll have a whole list of stuff that you go to the website and get. Um, if you can't fast food, I'll say this up front before we get into our lesson again today, um, that you can fast TV, you can fast radio, you can fast, you know, anything that you love, you fast that thing. You know, back in the day, uh, fasting was food because they didn't have TV or radio or any other distractions. All they had was food. So they denied themselves to get closer to God and, 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 Part of our conversation today is going to be about that. Amen. So if we can, let's go to, uh, oh, I, I dropped the ball. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, I believe, or 20. Um, Philippians chapter 3, I forgot to write that down. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 13. And we'll go through, and I'll kind of stop in between because there's some things that I want to share my heart about that that is important for us as Christians. Uh, praise God for you that all turning that are tuning in. Thank you so much for doing so. Um, let's start at verse 13. It says, "Brothers and sisters, do uh, I do not consider that I have made it um, my own yet? But one thing that I do, forgetting those lies, lies. As I'm reading from the Amplified." Uh, that what lies behind and which reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press towards the mark of the goal to win the prize, the heavenly prize 
uh, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All of us who are, <clears throat> excuse me, mature. Let me. Oh, I forgot to do that. Um, let me. Let me pull up the scripture. Sorry about that. Uh, all of us who are mature, pursuing spiritual perfection, should have this attitude. And if in any respect you have a different attitude, that to God will make clear to you. Verse 16 goes on and says, Only let us stay true to what we have already obtained. I'm going to park there just for a second because I want to talk about what we just read. One of the things I'm going to, I'm going to go from 16 backwards is to let us stay true to what we have already obtained. One, we have, we have, obtained, we have already obtained salvation. That was the first thing that happened when we gave our lives to the Lord. We've also been established grace, and we've also been given mercy. We deserve death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our, our Lord, or Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we've been set apart. We've been given a wonderful gift of salvation, which, unfortunately, I've noticed we have taken advantage of that grace and that mercy because we're now Christians. And so let us stay true to what have already been obtained, that we're supposed to be set apart. As a Christian, uh, we have been sanctified unto God, living a lifestyle of Christ in him to have the relationship with the Father that he's intended from the very beginning. And so we need to get back to living a holy lifestyle. You know, I, my wife and I kind of, been, we've been watched. I'm going to go ahead and say the show. No, I'm going to talk about shows like I do, but I, but today I'm going to because it's, it's a show that, that is very ungodly and and. And, and sad, but I, I'm going to tell you why. I'm telling you know. I'm going to say it's called Greenleaf, <clears throat> and Greenleaf is on the Oprah Winfrey Network. So we already know what she believes. She doesn't believe in the same God that we do. Uh, she believes there's more than one path to get to the Father. So they created this TV show about this church in uh, I want to say Atlanta or Georgia somewhere. I want to say it's there. But anyway, it's a mega church. They have 4,000 members, and this pastor. Uh, this bishop, uh, if you see the whole, if you see the show, it shows a lot of just just ungodliness of these leaders, and it. But but the cool, not the cool thing about it, the sad thing about it is, it's happening today, and it's what the world thinks of us in the church anyway. They think that it's about the riches, it's about the fame, it's about success, it's about all the worldly things, and we're supposed to be putting those things that are behind us. The Bible tells us that. I, you know, um, <clears throat> that we are new creatures in Christ, that old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. We've talked about in weeks past, we've talked about how we are to uh, lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us, and that if we love the world and the things of this world, that the love of the Father is not in us, right? And so I'm paraphrasing and I'm putting some things together, but I want to get to a point that we have to understand that um, when we come into Christ, become a true believer, a true Christian, that our lives must change. And that's the one true thing that we should understand and know that, yes, um, I'm in this world, but I'm no longer of this world. And I can no longer live the lifestyle that I used to live because that was enmity or in the enemy of God. It was against him because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, said the Lord. So we have to understand that um, when we come into the kingdom of God, there's a lifestyle that we live that's pleasing to him because scripture tells us that we're, it's no longer I, but Christ in me. That's the hope of glory. And so it's no longer about me. We represent the king of all kings. There are other kings, there are other gods, but the king that we choose to serve becoming a true Christian, true believer is that according to the Bible, we are to be holy and live a holy lifestyle. Does that mean we're to be perfect? We're supposed to work towards perfection. And we're supposed to put away childish things because when I was a child, I spec, reason, and understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. And so we need to know and understand that that as a Christian, we are supposed to grow from faith to faith to glory and glory and laying aside the weight. And that weight is the things that we brought with us into the kingdom of God that we need to lay aside. Because why? Because we um, are no longer our own. We have been bought with a price. So since we have accepted the terms and conditions, of uh, of the contract in blood that Jesus shed on the cross for us, then guess what? We can no longer live the way we used to live. Not to mention, when 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 the world sees you, when your neighbors see you, when your coworkers see you, when your fellow students see you, what do they see? They should not see you. They should see Christ in you. 
and and the problem that I've seen today, and and I've been, it's so funny because uh, you're probably not gonna like what I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna say it anyway because what can you do? You can't put me in hell. I know where I'm going, and you can either tune in or tune out. Hopefully, you tune in because it's true. But for me, I I hate where we are in the universal church today, and I say it a lot lately, and and because we've 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 made pastors and apostles and you know you know the the fivefold ministry leaders we made them into little gods. And so we're worshiping the man or the woman of God, not the God that's in the woman or man. And we got to get back to that first and foremost, because we've, we're supposed to show forth and be light and salt to show forth his good works. And the good work that he did for us is he, like, we have obtained salvation. So he set us apart. And that's the good works is what we show that we're different than the world and that we can make a difference in this world by us walking the walk, talking the talk, walking the spirits will not fulfill the lust of our flesh. And so when we look at scripture, when we look at what's been going on in our lives, it lets us know that we as Christians have to change. We have to live the lifestyle that he says for us. We got to repent. And what's so cool about God that, you know, just like we're going into this new year, that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we know we've missed the mark. We know we've gone the wrong way. We know we've known we've compromised in areas in our lives. We've we've allowed the enemy to come in and take root in us again. Because the cool part about the wonderful thing, the wonderful thing that I've learned about God is that once we become a Christian, a true believer, that the enemy cannot do anything unless, unless God allows it to happen, first and foremost, right? And then the second part about that is that. He's there's a word that the scripture says that he won't put on us more than we can bear, but we can put on ourselves more than we can bear by allowing ourselves to be caught up in the world and the, in the things of this world. And that 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 God can't bless sin. So you can't think that your mission, your call on your life, you being a leader is going to 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 overshadow your sin. It's not. Yes, we do have grace. But the grace is for us to, to sanctify ourselves unto the Lord and not carry on the weight and the sin that so easily besets us. In the scripture in verse 14, it goes, it says, And I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God. See, there was an upward call of God for you to live his way, to live his thoughts, to do his to, He has a will and a purpose and a plan for your life. And it will, it, it, you know, one of the things I've learned, and I'm kind of bouncing around, so don't even forgive me because I'm just, this is just my heart today. Um, one of the things that I've learned is in regular school, you'll see that they'll just pass you through. Like, you know, when you, when the end of the year, you can pass with a D minus, you can pass even with an F, they'll pass you through. If you, years pass, they wouldn't let you go to the next grade until at least you got a, a, you know, a C minus, uh, maybe a D, you know, but now they're passing folks with Fs and, and, and reason being is because they just want, they don't care about you. It's a assembly line to get you indoctrinated to this world system. It's indoctrinating you to, 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 to learn. And the cool part about it, there are good parts about school, so don't get me wrong, but the bottom line is that they'll just, just pass you through. In the kingdom of God, he will not take you to the next level until you pass the test. And if you don't pass the test, you'll stay a child forever, not because he wants you to, because you're choosing to. And so he wants you to be a mature Christian that you're able to rightly divide the word of truth, that you're able to share the gospel with others, that you be able to lay hands on the sick that they recover, you be able to cast out name in his name and show forth the glory of our Father, show forth the glory of Christ because he's giving you the ability to do so, do so the power of the Holy Spirit that's in you. So try pressing towards the mark, the goal should be living holy. The goal should be living in your authority, living in your purpose under God because it's not about, it's one of those things that when I made a decision, and I say this a lot and I'm not bragging on myself, but one of the things, when I made the decision to live for Christ, um, am I perfect? No. Do I make mistakes? Absolutely. But I'm pressing towards the mark knowing that holiness is my goal. Holiness is the lifestyle. It's either, you know, in the in the sanctified church, it says holiness or hell. And so there's a there's some truth to that. Um, I don't want to renounce God. I don't want to go backwards. It's easier for us to live in sin than it is to live safe. So let me say that again. It's easier for us to live a sinner than it is to live safe, especially in the beginning, because you're walking by your flesh, as we talked about, you know, you're a carnal Christian and you're being made spiritual. And so next year, going into 2019, make it your plan, make it your purpose. Yeah, you can talk about losing weight. You can talk about expanding your business or, or being closer to your wife or to your spouse or to your children, spending more time, whatever. Make sure part of your goal and pressing towards the mark should be drawing closer to God, because it's, 
you're no longer your own. So so long as you have pride, I, you know, I was watching, you know, again, I was watching some of these TV shows and, and this one young lady, um, I'm, I'm diversity just a little bit. And in, in, in Greenleaf, there's this, there's this episode where this young lady um, um, got hurt and, and she had some internal problems and they end up doing a hysterectomy. And, and, and to save her life, but the little girl, she's just, you know, about she, I guess either she's about to turn 18 or 18, thinking about she has a boyfriend, thinking about marriage someday, living a holy lifestyle, hadn't had sex with her, with her boyfriend, but she figured that, if, you know, her living a holy lifestyle, that he, eventually that she'll be able to have kids and so forth. And part of the challenge was and is that for the hysterectomy, that uh, her ovaries, they took out her ovaries to save her life because she had some cysts on her ovaries and they were bad enough and severe enough that it could grow into cancer and, and, and kill her or whatever. But the little girl's like, hey, she got so pissed off at God and blamed God for it. She says, well, how can this perfect God who knows everything allow this to, to happen to me? And, and instead of the mother really sitting down with her to explain to her how God operates and how sin entered into this world, and then give her the, the, the silver lining and helping her make lemons, lemonade out of lemon is that, okay, one, God is able to restore. Yes, what the world did took it out, but he's able to make it happen. He made the impossible happen with, with, with Mary. Mary um, was without child, hadn't had sex. Guess what? She birthed supernaturally a child. The mother's like, well, you can adopt. Well, well by faith, we know, yeah, by the natural that 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 um she couldn't do it by by the natural means but supernaturally god could do anything but fail so if he chooses to he'll allow her to be even though she's barren she'll bear a child and so we need to get back into speaking faith we need to get back into doing the things that are pleasing to our god believing that 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 yeah there's going to be bad situations you may want to renounce god you may want to give up on god because certain things happened in your life, but this year, 2019, look, you're still alive. You're still, you're still in your right mind. You still have reasonable health. And again, even in that, part of that is our own fault. Like me, I'm overweight. I need to lose weight. So yes, and what's the cool part about the fast? Yeah, the fast is draw closer to God, but it also gets me on the right track of the beginning of, of, my, of, of, my, of my lifestyle change of eating the right things. I, I tried it earlier this year. You saw me try to do my weight loss challenge and I failed because I did it for the wrong reasons. I wasn't prayed up. I wasn't doing the things. I was doing it from a, a excuse the expression, a, a, a secular perspective. But but my lifestyle, if I want to live life the way God intends it to, it's, it's, it's an abundant life. It's also in my health. It's in my finances. It's in every aspect of my life that that He wants balance and He wants order and He and He that abundant life comes in knowing that I'll prosper and be in good health even as my soul prospers. So going down to uh, verse. 17. Let's take a look at that. Philippians 3, 17 says, brothers and sisters, together follow my example and observe those who live by the pattern we gave you. Uh, I'll keep going after that. And so this is, this is, this is Paul talking here and he's letting them know, look, my example is when I was in this world, I did the things of the world. I was, a, I was a chief, I was a chief sinner. I was, uh, the, you know, I, I was killing Christians. I was persecuting Christians. But now that I'm in Christ, the same, the same vigor, the same authority that I had in the world, I now have in Christ. And that I'm going to live a certain lifestyle to show forth that you can follow me as I follow Christ. And I'm saying the same thing to you. Follow me as I follow Christ. Because I chosen, as I said earlier, when I gave my life to the Lord, see, I could have, I mean, I had fame. I had fortune. I had all those things when I was in the world. And so now that I'm in Christ, I know that it was all vanity. It was all vain. It was all about Brian. But now that I'm in Christ, the money I get, I have a purpose for it. The lifestyle that I live, I have a purpose for it. The house that I live, we share our house with others. We've had people come into our home. We share our finances. We do a lifestyle according to the best we can do the word of God. And and, we're, and every day as I see a mistake, I got an awesome wife that, 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 that brings the things to my members that, hey, baby, we can't do it this way or vice versa. And so we, we're helping each one to another. And so that's what I'm looking for in 2019, that we, the remnant that, that because the Bible says there's going to be a great falling away. And there's a lot of folks listening to false doctrines and fables and holding on to their own understanding of God's word. I get that. But there's a small remnant of people that are looking for an example of true godliness and holiness because that's what we need to be following, not the dictates of this world. Because there are false shepherds, there are all false sheep in the in the 
in the pulpit that are leading churches. And, and don't keep that from you uh, having a relationship with God because, yeah, don't follow God. I mean, excuse me. Ooh, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Don't follow the man or woman. Follow the God that's in that person. So if you don't see God in that person, walk away from the church. Don't walk away from God because his word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the same God. He is the same way. He is, you know, he is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way that you can get to the Father is through Jesus. And if you don't believe that, then guess what? Then you probably were saved anyway. And if you truly try him, there's a guy, there's a there's a pastor named Joel Osteen, and he says, if you give me a year, I'll transform your life. Give God a try. Give him a full year of selling out to him, exposing yourself to his word and to his presence. He says, in his presence is a fullness of joy, and he has a purpose and a plan for your life. And if you allow yourself to truly be immersed in him and you in his word in your in your in you, then you'll see the work, the miracles, the signs and wonders that will follow those that believe. You shall be able to do expedient, you'll be able to do great and wonderful exploits in his name. Why? Because it's no longer about you, it's about you, the Christ that's in you, the word of God that you're always feeding yourself with and being in the presence of God. So that way, in the presence of God, you won't you won't be walked, you won't be. Walking by the dictates of this world, be walking the dictates of God. Let's go into verse 18, and we're almost done. Uh, verse 18. There we go. For there are many of whom I have often told you, and now tell you, even with, with tears, who live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Let me say that again. Who live as enemies of the cross of Christ, rejecting and opposing his way of salvation. I'm going to go to verse 19 and then we'll, oh no, yeah. Whose fate is destruction, whose God is their belly, their own worldly appetite with sensual, their vanity, their, excuse me, their sensuality, their vanity, whose, who, excuse me, whose glory is in their shame, who's, who focus their mind on earthly and temporal things. Verse 19, I mean 20, it says, but we are different because our citizenship is in heaven. So we need to understand that long as we live the dictates of this earth and realizing that we're no longer our own, we are citizens of heaven, and as the citizens of heaven, we are supposed to show forth the glory of our Father is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because I say it all the time, and I'm going to say it again today, that the salvation part is easy because it's just accepting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But the Lord part is the hardest part. So in 2019, make him Lord of your life. Because the salvation part is I accept you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, I'm saved. But the part that we all struggle in is that process of sanctifying ourselves from sin and living a lifestyle according to the word of God, which is holiness. So sanctify yourself in 2019 and watch how God works. You know, I, you know, I look at, I work, I work less than I worked before. I do think, you know, God has, he has given me, he has given me uh, great opportunities to share the gospel like I'm doing now. He's given me great opportunities to share uh, my finances and help in my community and, and love my wife and family in a balanced way. I no longer have to struggle the way we used to. My wife doesn't have to struggle the way we used to because we're no longer toiling the land. We're tilling the land because we're walking according to the word of God. And you'll have great success because in his authority that he's given us, we're able to man, just do great and awesome and mighty things for him and live a lifestyle of peace and joy and love in the Holy Ghost. And so going into 2000, uh, going into 2019, we uh, have a work to do. Those that are set apart, those that love God, those that have been really, really looking for an opportunity to do the right thing. 2019 is our year to do the right thing. We can no longer hold on to the things. Uh, they said, the scripture says, lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily beset us and run the race with patience. And going into 2019, one of your main goals to obtain this year is walking holy, not walking just any kind of way, saying that God's going to change me. God's going to do it himself. I can live any kind of way I want to. That's the lie from the pit of hell that, again, the salvation part, God did your part is sanctifying yourself 
unto God. I share it all the time that I thought when I gave my life to the Lord that he was going to take out the stinky thinking, that he was going to take out the sinful thoughts, he was going to take out the ways of this world and give me a whole brand new download of him. Well, the, the way you do that, the download that you do that is, is through this. This is how you change and transform your mind is getting into the word of god spending time in his presence worshiping him through song and spiritual spiritual songs and hymns and getting into his presence whether it's fullness or joy and watch your 2019 be better than your 2018 because if you dwell in him and he dwells in you whatever you ask it without without doubting that in faith it shall come to pass in jesus name so i want to thank you for 2018 allowing me to be uh, one of your ministers of, of, of the truth. Um, my goal in 2019 is continue on. We're going to actually expand and do more now that I have the software and hardware needed to, to do more. We're going to do more, and you're going to see other ministers coming forth as well. I'm excited about that because that's that's part of what this broadcast is about, is sharing the truth and allowing others to be a part of that truth and sharing the truth with you so that way we can grow together and be that remnant that's set apart, being the holy nation of you people, being set apart for his youth and his use only, that we can be the things that God can glorify in the season, that we understand who we are in him and that we don't get puffed up in pride, that we are keepers one to another. So when we do, a brother that's overtaken the fall, they that are spiritual restore him. So again, we're not saying we're going to be, we're perfect. We're saying that we're striving for perfection. So strive for perfection. Stop, stop, stop selling out. Stop being mediocre. That God has a plan for your life and his life in you is a peaceable life with joy in purpose, in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we honor you and thank you for allowing us to see another year. We thank you that you sit high and look low, that you know all things, Lord, and that we repent. You said, if your people who are called by uh, your name shall humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will heal our land. We'll hear from heaven, Lord, and you will restore us. And so we repent right now in Jesus' name for falling short. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to while we still fall short, that your grace is sufficient to cover our multitude of sin. God, we thank you that we look to the hills where our help coming from and our help coming from you. Lord, we need the Holy Spirit like never before, that there is a great falling away. And we know that your word told us that, Lord, and we understand that, that there's an itching of ears and there's a false doctrine that's going around that's going through this world of, of, of being your own gods and being your own truth. But, Lord, we know that you're the only truth, and we thank you for that now, Lord, that we uh, go into 2019, that you protect us and bless our families, Lord, bless our resources as we draw closer to you. Continue to bless us. Open up our eyes of our understanding that we become mature Christians, glorifying you in Jesus' name. Amen. Whew, uh, I don't want to leave our broadcast like I normally do without giving you an opportunity if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to do so. He saved me from a lifestyle that, yeah, it was a reckless lifestyle. It was a fun lifestyle while I was in it until I realized that I was hurting people in the process. I wasn't considered a bad guy. Um, I was, a, you know, considered a good guy, but doing bad things, right? I was, I was a whoremonger and um, I, I worked too much and, 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 did too much of I mean I wasn't I didn't get high I didn't drink my my vice was women and then when the Lord showed me how precious women were that that I had to repent and turn my life over to Him to fill that void that was in my heart that void of thinking women would do it success would do it only He could do it and He did it for me so I have the peace that I never had before I have the joy that I never had before no matter if I'm a based or bound meaning abundant or 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 in between my blessings I still have joy because I know that that one He's the author and the finisher of my faith. And two, that he saved me, that, that if I live a life according to his purpose and his will for my life, then I'll have eternal life with him, and there's a reward for me in heaven. Just like there's a reward here now, but I'm, looking, I'm not looking for what, no, I already have, my, I've, I've had my good stuff. Right now, I want as many people as I can to, to have this opportunity that I can share with you to give your life to Jesus Christ. So if you repeat after me in prayer, um, praying, praying is just speaking to God, just let, you know, having a communication with God. And so we're going to let him know that we love him and that we need him and that we need to repent. So repeat after me. Father God in heaven, I come to you as a sinner. I believe you sent Jesus to pay a price for me. Lord Jesus, 
save me. I'm confessing in my heart, confessing, I'm sorry, and believing in my heart that you were raised from the dead. Save me, Jesus, and I'll live for you forevermore. In your name I pray. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. All right. If you just prayed that prayer, then you have just became a Christian. You are now part of the citizen of heaven. And there's some resources and things that you need to know because there is an enemy and the enemy hates that what you just did. And so what I want to do is I want to get you some resources. So take down my contact information. That's my cell number. That's my personal email and all my personal information. I, you know, I want to be approachable and reachable so that way you can reach me. So write that information down. Give me a call. Let me know. And I want to email, I want to email you some, some bunch of ebooks that the Lord has allowed me to, to write and put together to help you in your growth. And then I want to walk alongside you and disciple you and help you to grow. And so we have some great videos and then we'll be doing some other broadcasts to help you. Then, you know, and then we need to get you water baptized and some other things we need to get you. So please contact me because your, your, your journey has just begun. Um, you're, you know, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are now a new creature in Christ. So we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast. This is the last Sunday of 2018. We'll see you in 2019. May the Lord keep us and have his kindness shine upon us. May we be in, in, in health even as our soul prosper. Lord, may we depart from this broadcast, but never from your presence. We pronounce blessings over your people, Lord God. Take them in the 2019 as they go over the dangerous highways and byways uh, over, the, over the next couple of days. They're going to be drunk drivers and folks that are high and acting crazy, but you'll protect them and keep them in perfect peace. May they get to their destinations. May they get there safely, Lord God, with no danger seen or unseen. And coming into 2019, we are fasting and praying to see you. The Lord will draw closer to you, Lord God, so you'll draw closer to us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We thank you for being a part of the broadcast. We'll see you uh, next year. <laughs> Bye, love. I love you all that have tuned in. Bless you now. Bye-bye.